Hello everyone, welcome to the second part of my Erasmus video. If you haven't watched the first part of the video yet, then feel free to click on that link. Basically, today we're going to carry on uh, talking about my uh, Erasmus experience and today I will mainly focus on the campus life, which includes uh, the student life and also like my classes and the differences between um, you know, my classes in England and the ones I had back home. And without further ado, let's start the video! Enjoy! Okay, so to start this video, I decided that it would be a good idea to go back to accommodation because um, I realized that in the first part, I mostly talked about you know my room, but I didn't really talk about the options you have when um, you go live in Brighton or maybe in general any other university city. <laughs> So if you come to the University of Sussex to study, and that might be applicable to other universities in the UK, then you have mainly three options. The first one is uh, on-campus accommodation. There are pros and cons about living on campus. For me, the main advantage is that you don't have to worry about looking for accommodation, which is kind of difficult when you don't live in the country because you cannot visit the house, you can be scammed, which that can happen unfortunately. And in my university, all the Erasmus students automatically had housing, which was quite good to alleviate the stress of having to find accommodation when you already have so many things to worry about before going to the country. Another advantage is that also the accommodation is on campus, which is easier for you to get to the classes. You don't have to buy um, a bus pass because you don't need to take the bus in the first place. You can literally just walk to your lessons, uh, which is quite convenient, especially if you have to wake up at uh, 8 a.m., which for some people is early, um, because you can just, you know, walk in five minutes to your class. Actually, I remember once I woke up one minute before for my seminar because I mixed up a.m. and p.m. so my alarm didn't set off. <laughs> so I had to wake up very quickly and I managed to have like some sort of food dress very quickly and I was in my class 10 minutes later. So I was only 10 minutes late. There are more advantages but I would say the last one is that you also get to meet quite a lot of people because you'll get international students as well as national students. Uh, so you'll get, you get to meet a lot of people. Which is good if you think you might feel lonely. Now I really only have one disadvantage of living on campus is that it might be a bit loud because um, if you're the kind of quiet kind of person then it might not really be for you because on campus usually, especially on the first months of the year, students are obviously new to the university life and they will like party a lot. The campus might also get quite noisy so it's something to consider if you like your peace and quiet. The second option is off-campus accommodation and I think the main advantage is that you can decide where you live in town, you can be closer to um, the shopping centres, the restaurants, you know, the more lively part of Brighton if you want, or you can be somewhere quieter as well, so it really depends. You would also be closer to supermarkets, which can be quite useful to bear in mind as well because if you live on campus then you have to take the bus. Um, to take your uh, groceries back. But I would say it's fairly similar to on-campus accommodation in that uh, it's still run by the university so you don't have to worry about finding a house and all that stuff. Now I think there's quite a few disadvantages of living off-campus because first of all you can be quite lonely and what I mean by that is not that you know no one likes people that live off-campus but it's just that you're likely to live with fewer people and you might, might be more difficult to uh, participate in the student life on campus because obviously you're, you, know, you don't live on campus and also you have to commute to the campus to go to your classes so it is something to consider in my opinion. Now finally the third option is to just choose your private accommodation and I don't really recommend that if you don't live in the city already because um, if you go private basically you cannot view the house as I said earlier and you could just get scammed so it can be quite tricky because yeah it's just very tricky because if you don't even have a friend that can see the house uh, for you just to make sure the house actually exists because <laughs> there are scams online unfortunately then I don't recommend it. I think if I had to give some advantages about living on private accommodation it would be that first uh, you can decide to live alone if you want you know you could rent a studio uh, it might be that you are family, so if your family is coming with you to study, then that might be an option for you. Though it's good to know that at least at Sussex University, there are family accommodations, so I would look into that before going private without, you know, checking. 
Going private can also be good if you know you want to live with specific people or maybe you want to live in somewhere that's bigger than in the university rooms. Though to be honest, if you just come for nine months, then I think a small room is better. But again, I'm just being negative about private housing. But <laughs> here you go, that's my honest opinion. The main difference that I've noticed between my university in France and my university in Brighton was the timetable because in England the timetable is usually much lighter than the one I had in France. For example, back home I remember, it depended on the year, but in, in, on average it was about 16 to almost 20 hours a week and in Brighton it was only 8 hours. I remember actually, um, I called them up and I thought there was a mistake, so I just asked them if they had forgotten some modules, something like that. And no, that was just eight hours for me every week. But just because you will have about eight hours every week, it doesn't mean that you won't do any work and that will just be, you know, the high life for you. <laughs> the way it worked for me in France was that um, all you needed to know was basically presented during the seminar or the lecture. But in England, you have only eight hours because um, the tutors are only here to kind of introduce the topic and give the main outlines and the main, main aspects of the subject. And then you expect to do the work at home, so it's a lot more work at home than it is in France. Another difference that I've noticed is that the relationship between the students and uh, the tutors is quite different. Back home in France, you had to call them sir, madame, and use the vous in French, which is the polite form of addressing someone. But then in England, you just call them by their first name. So it was quite weird for me to do that at the beginning because I was so used to being very polite to my tutors. I've even had the occasion of going out for a meal or a drink with some of my tutors, which doesn't happen as often back in France. I did um, meet with a tutor back home, but that was just a one thing. But here it's much more common. Uh, tutors are more more happy to hang out with their students, you know, so it's quite nice. I mean, obviously it doesn't mean like they're gonna be your best friends, but it's quite a normal thing to do. Another difference that I will talk about is the grading system. Basically, in France, uh, we grade things out of 20 normally, but in England they use percentages, So, which means that if you get 50% in France, it's worth a 10 out of 20, but 60% is not worth 12 out of 20, it's usually more like 14 out of 20. Go figure. <laughs> and then if you get 70%, uh, that's 16 out of 20. A bit of jargon is necessary here because when I first uh, received my grades in my first few exams, everyone was like, oh, you got a first, oh, I got a 2-2, two -two, and I was just like, what? <laughs> Basically, if you get uh, 50 up to 59%, then you get a 2-2. Two -two. Uh, if you get 60 to 69%, then you get a 2-1. And then if you get 70 uh, up until 100, <laughs> one can only hope, then you get a first. Here you go. Now let's talk about the student life because I think it's quite an important aspect of your year abroad and everyone wants to know what it is like to be a student in England. What I've loved the most about the student life in Brighton is the Freshers' Week. If you don't know what a Freshers' Week is, I didn't know that before I came to England so don't judge anyone, <laughs> um, it's basically a week uh, where you've got events such as you know, speed mating when you have to talk to people for like two or three minutes, then you move on so you get, you get to meet a lot of people. I had band dancing when I had to learn how to dance like a cowboy. Uh, there was another event when we had the Brighton Pier all to ourselves, I mean the uh, students from uh, Sussex University, and we could just go on rides all night and it was like literally like private, so it was great, I loved it. Um, and many other events like that, like there's quite a few, there was about I think I bought like the golden ticket which allowed me to go on all the events and I think I went to like 10 of them out of 12 so yeah <laughs> it was great. So after the Freshers' Fair there's still many uh, opportunities for you to meet people and socialize. So for example there's uh, societies which again don't exist in France um, and it can be many many things. So basically a society is when you create um, a group or community of people uh, who have the same interests. So for example I joined um, a choir um, uh, society um, but you could also join uh, Harry Potter societies, science societies, Doctor Who societies, there's like about a hundred of them, there's loads, loads, loads. There's also dancing, 
um, performing, drama, I mean, the, the list goes on. Society is also a great way to meet people because, for example, in my society, so the choir society, in my first year there were about 70, 80 members, so it's about 80 chances and opportunities of meeting people, so it's great. Um, and it's also good because, you know, if you live with X amount of people, you also maybe want to meet people that have similar interests in other um, social spheres, I want to say. So yeah, it's great. <laughs> and also societies, they meet uh, normally every week, so it can be any day of the week really. Um, so again, it's uh, a chance to socialize with other people weekly and you know, you can even go out on uh, social events and all that stuff. So I definitely uh, recommend you to join societies um, if you want to make friends. <laughs> Finally, in my university there were two bars and that was great because uh, those bars were mainly for students to do performances, organize events, uh, usually it was charity kind of things. And so for example, you could go to like singing uh, concerts, which I did with my uh, society. You could also have uh, ukulele society, there were more classical music as well. I mean, there's drama, there's many, many, many things. And it's great also because it's usually cheap. Uh, the entry is sometimes even free, or it might be a couple of pounds. And the drinks are also very cheap. So it means that you can have a very cheap night, or almost free even sometimes, uh, without having to go very far or spending a lot of money. So yeah, all good for students. All right, that's it for the second part. I hope you found the video interesting and useful. And if you have any questions, then feel free to ask them and I might do a maybe Q&A video or we'll just reply to your comments. And yeah, I think that's it for today. So I'll see you next week. Bye.